Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my beautiful daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are gathered today, honey, to talk sister wives. We are going into the archives, yes. into the records. We are in season four, mm -hmm. and I think episode nine. Yeah. Talking about IVF for Mary, real estate licenses for those other brown hose. wives of those other hoes. <laughs> and it was it was kind of an interesting yeah. episode. There's some tidbits in there. Now, before we get into it, we do have to issue you a very serious disclaimer. Please. Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast that doesn't talk politics. No. We are stupid, though. We and are very so, dumb. If you're sensitive... You might want to find yourself another dumpster baby. But if you're ready to talk about some actually dumb polygamists, yeah. welcome to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you are cool like us and like to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, <gasps> patreon.com slash reality TV Cringe. We have so much bonus shit up on there. It's crazy. And it is the best way to support us if you want us to keep doing what we are doing and yeah. doing so well. Doing what it is, what it is, what it well. Now, if you are on YouTube, first of all, thank you. Hi. You look beautiful today. Hi. Please don't forget, however, to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us to grow in the algorithm. And so we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you in advance. Thank you. Now, before we get into the episode yeah. and break down these crazy browns, we do have to remind you that Sister Wives is coming back, honey. Girl, I can't wait. The news on the Mormon LDS Temple Streets oh my God. is as follows. What? Apparently, Cody Brown's nephew, who has a hard on, a hate on <laughs> for Cody Brown. Like us. Doesn't like his uncle because he has eyes that see and yeah. ears that hear. He's a person. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't like Cody. He has announced somewhere, I don't know, I can't be bothered to research <laughs> that. But he has announced that Sister Wives, apparently, season 19, is coming back. In August of this year. Year of our Lord, 2024. Oh, my God. Oh. For my birthday. I can't wait. Oh, my God. And everyone rejoiced on the Mormon planet. Yes. I'm so uh. excited. Furthermore, starting in July. And uh, oh what day? Uh, the 16th, I the think. The 16th of July, <laughs> which is a Tuesday. Yeah. We got some evangelical people coming back, too. Ooh. And I'm talking about the Plaths. Yes. That's right. Welcome to Plathville is coming back. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why are these raccoons obsessed with boring white people? Oh, my God. First and foremost, we attract what we are. <laughs> we are boring white people. <laughs> Second, we Facts. have been watching these shows for so long. And there are so many toxic, terrible layers so filled with religious abuse mm. and neglect and all those terrible things we love we love it so much <laughs> so we're invested yeah and so we're going to be covering welcome to plathville starting in july oh God, and we're also going to be all over mm. sister wives 19 starting in august so yes. if you guys are as excited as us drop a comment if you're on youtube let oh us know God. what you're thinking yeah now of course with sister wives what we need to expect that it'll probably have a different tone. Oh, totally. I'm wondering if the editors who I kind of view as being boneheaded yeah, and they're selfish, dumb as fuck. Yeah. whether they went back through the footage before what happened with Garrison and maybe tried to tailor it a little bit. I hope so. To what was happening in the family. But they probably didn't. No, probably We're not. We're probably going to go right into season 19 like we go into every season with yeah. everybody lying and acting a fool. Mm-hmm. But it might be a different season, is all I'm saying, to prepare us for that. Well, and a lot of people are hoping that it's the final season. Like, they hope Sister Wives gets canceled after this. Not they don't me. want a season 20. I do. People don't want to hear any more about the Browns. There's a lot of people that don't even listen to Sister Wives recaps or anything like that anymore what? because of Garrison's what? passing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of comments and stuff being like, I will not watch a single Sister Wives episode ever again after Garrison's passing. And I'm like, you know, that's fine. Yeah, valid. I respect that. That's cool. But we don't have integrity, so we're going to no. we're going to watch it. Absolutely. And the fact of the matter is like this family is a reflection on all of us to some mm -hmm. degree mm -hmm. and so many of us and i will say you and i for sure like we have sort of this weird 
I would say parasocial type of a relationship with the Brown family. Like I don't consider them part of my family, but I am very invested in the kids. Oh, for I'm sure. very invested in these women who have divested themselves of polygamy. I really want to know what happens. And I'm also rooting for everybody except for two of them. Yeah. I'm rooting for them all and I want to see them win. And I also want to see how it works out. Granted, I want them to tell the truth. Yeah. I'm not going to hold my breath. God. But I would like for them to actually show us who they are. Yeah. And so that's why we're sticking with it. It's not because like we don't have a social or a moral right, right. compass. Like we do. And Somewhat. I'd also love the opportunity. <laughs> I would also love the opportunity to put things into perspective. For sure. Yeah. To see what we're like, see what they're offering on, on the show. And then like talk about the veracity of that. Like I'm looking forward to that personally. Oh, for sure. And I feel like it's not like a bad thing to talk about these people because this is their lives. They've been on the sh the TV for 18 seasons. We've been watching them and, and go through all of this bullshit. And it would be disingenuous in my opinion to act like nothing happened mm -hmm. or whatever or like that they just don't exist anymore when the show's still the show like it's these are still people like cody brown is still a boneheaded idiot mm -hmm. like i'm still gonna watch it mainly because of him and robin honestly because mm -hmm. of how stupid they are and how much i hate them well and by season 19 there is no question but that they are aware of how everybody they feels have to be for them i think during the covid years Cody and Robin were thinking, oh, people are going to believe us. They're going to yeah. understand that this is about COVID and this is about right, us being whatever. careful and doing what the government is telling us to do, except for getting vaccinated. Uh -huh. yeah. So we are towing the line and everyone's going to understand it. I don't think it was until 2022, 2023 that Cody and Robin really started to feel the hugeness of how people truly i want to say hated that's terrible but do not like them i but mean robin's known them. for years she's not the favorite yeah. cody's been taking fire and smoke for years but it nothing compared yeah. to the last couple of years and what he did to these wives and then with garrison i, I mean, mean oh my god people are beside themselves oh 100 and it would be nice to see cody and robin have some growth because of this i would hope if they have souls in their bodies hopefully they grew a little bit and like they've learned their lessons and like maybe we'll actually see some humanity from them but that's just me being optimist yeah. I feel like they're going to be the same pieces of shit as they always are. And everybody's just going to be like up in arms again. Like we were all these other seasons mm -hmm. of like how terrible they are. But it's going to matter more in season 19 and ultimately in season 20. Like, for example, if in season 20, Cody and Robin are persisting on their oh, bullshit, God. persisting to pretend that they have the right position, they haven't been lying, that they haven't done anything to destroy this family, like that will be so interesting to actually watch you're going to be watching two narcissists who are so um, self-absorbed that they have a fundamental inability to see themselves as the world sees them and as right. they truly are and i did hear by the way that mccalty was on patreon last week with too many tacos tony and she actually alluded to the fact that cody did not call her for her birthday <sighs> So we know that like he didn't call Gabe for his birthday a couple of years ago, but he did call Gabe on that day to talk about COVID because Cody was sick and was all concerned about his own health. Um, and irrespective of the fact that Cody has said through the seasons, like every birthday counts, we don't miss even one birthday. He didn't call Gabe. We all saw it. And he didn't call McKelty. So this is even after Garrison. And it feels like nothing has shifted. Nothing has changed with Cody and Ugh. if I was Robin I would be like what are you doing you have all of these children even just to save face I mean like at the very least call your children on their birthday right. like try to pretend you're interested to in them to some degree if we're going to continue to have a show but he's not even trying it's like the barest minimum no and maybe she is telling him maybe she is being like come on we look terrible and we're gonna lose our house because we're broke because of you because you're making us look like total pieces of shit because we are pieces of shit like why don't you try a little bit and maybe he's just drunk and doesn't care like maybe he's got a drinking problem now because we've seen those pictures on reddit of him at the kroger or whatever in flags that well not the kroger but you know what i mean yeah the fries and he's buying a bunch of beer yeah so i don't know man it'll be interesting to see what they're like in season 19 mm -hmm. but i'm sure it's going to be so infuriating 
Yeah. I, I'm of two minds about it. Like yeah. on the one hand, I'm so excited to get back into it. But on the other hand, oh, my guard is up because mm. I'm just like, I have so much rage built up for that piece of shit, Cody Brown. Oh, for sure. But setting that aside now, <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to a sweeter time <laughs> in Sister Wives history. Specifically, we're going back to season four. I think we're in the year 2013, 2012, like 2013. Yeah. Uh, Solomon has was just born he's yep. about six king months solomon. old king solomon is coming to the family yeah and this episode kind of deals with mary's belated birthday present mm-hmm. and also the real estate stuff yeah. so kick us off babe yeah so we start the episode with mary and cody kind of packing up for mexico and she just went to mexico a couple seasons ago so this seems like it's kind of like on par for Cody. I feel like he does this where he takes the wives on a special trip and it's always to Mexico to some stupid resort or whatever to like show this like grand, what do you call it? Grand gesture of love, but it doesn't actually mean anything. Like it's all performative. But anyway, they're packing for Mexico. She's super excited because this time they're not going to one of those cheap resorts. They're going to go into a nice hotel. They're going to have some excursions. It's not a hotel. It's a condo. It's like their own place. Like on the beach. They're paying for an upgrade, which means TLC is paying, paying for, for that upgrade. Yeah. So yeah. they're very, very excited about it. And Mary's talking about how she loves to go to Mexico or really anywhere with Cody because... Ew. He neglects her. Yeah. <laughs> and well, when they get there, by the way, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit and they're so excited to see the ocean like right off of their lanai. She's like immediately like, I want to go to bed though. Mm. Uh, Are you ready for bed? I kiss your pee pee. Mm. And I'm just like, Mary, he's not going to touch you, honey. Oh, he probably will out of obligation. But he's I don't not gonna think he's going to touch all. her. Like, And as of last year, she's talking about no sex for many years i'm thinking she's not getting any this is all performative on the part of cody brown oh for sure and cody is so pushy about this trip like his whole goal is to get mary to finally decide on what she's going to do are we going to have another baby or are we not because i need to know if i need to keep boinking you or if we need to keep doing this stuff because otherwise i just want to forget about you and our marriage like i did already by burning down your ring <laughs> melting down your ring right like, so he's like i really want her to make a decision because robin offered her womb for surrogacy and mary still hasn't decided so i hope she'll she'll make a decision well and you notice like before we even get to mexico like he comes over to mary's house just to pack and he's getting a couple of shirts out of the closet because he's got his stuff strewn across four houses Uh but he doesn't stay there no like it's i think the eve of them actually leaving but he just gathers his things and he goes right back i think to robin's house which is where he is already here in vegas spending most of his time 100 percent. and cody even talks about it on the couch like this whole idea of him taking a wife to mexico he's like there's a lot of pressure put on me because then i i don't want the other wives to get this expectation that i got to take them on big trips like this too because i'm not gonna do it right <laughs> like that's essentially what he's well saying. christine got to go to galveston <laughs> oh my god so exotic wow. galveston texas <laughs> amazing i've been to galveston honey uh, me too and it ain't shit <laughs> no, it ain't. but anyway no offense to people who like galveston so you know cody is obviously very invested in having the entire audience believe that he loves mary and mm-hmm. that he wants to have a child but we know that he doesn't want to have this child no. I'm wondering, like, are we having this conversation in the first place to highlight Robin's great sacrifice and willingness to offer her womb so we can talk about that some more? Because Cody already knows he doesn't want this child, and he probably already knows that Mary doesn't either. Of course. But the wives seem to think that Mary wants... The kids, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but the wives are straight up saying on the couch, like, oh, yeah, I think Mary does want another kid. Robin's dumbass is like, yeah, I think she does want to do IVF for herself. I think she does. I know her so well. We're best friends. Yeah. And she's saying that she thinks Mary wants to carry her own child. Yeah. Via IVF. Um, So I think she's already kind of trying to wiggle herself off that altar of sacrifice. So she doesn't have to put her own body through it because we know she's going to be getting pregnant with Cody's child in a year or two or whatever. Uh But she's already trying to get over it. We hear Janelle saying, yeah, I really feel like she'd regret it if she didn't have another child. And Christine is agreeing as well. And I'm like, guys... 
Mary at this point, I want to say is 41 years uh-huh. old, yep. which I mean, there's plenty of women who are having babies in their 40s and such. But at the same time, oh my God, I can't imagine a world where I would have had a child at 41, 42, 43. No way. Started over with a whole ass baby. Well, and like you were kind of in a similar position because Mary's kid, Leon, is like 15. Mm-hmm. Like you were like... Your yep. daughter was like around 14, 15 when you mm-hmm. were in your 40s and you were single and dating all those. Oh, yeah. I was girl. having fun. I didn't want to uh, have no baby on it. Thank God you didn't. But could no. you imagine like having a baby when you're like no. already kind of established? Like your kid's about to leave the nest. They're growing up. Like why would you want to start all over? Well, and at the end of this episode, Mary kind of alludes to this. She's like, I feel like I'm too young yeah. to be an empty nester, but I'm too old to have a child at this time. Exactly. But I feel like she's got all of this attention on herself for this one reproductive issue. And I'm like, can we just like not do that? Can we just let Mary arrive at her own decision when she's ready to and then watch Cody reject her because he's not going to want to give her anything that she wants, much less a baby. But let Mary make that decision herself. Well, and doesn't she come up with this decision in like a later season or whatever? And she's like, oh, I do want to have kids. And Cody does say, no, we're old now. So you had your chance. Yes. And I mean, granted, just to play devil's advocate the fact that mary goes back and forth and like can't decide on anything that's totally a part of her personality because we see that in season 17 18 when she can't fucking decide if she's gonna stay with cody even though he literally told her he doesn't want anything to do with her like that is annoying to me about mary i'm like just fucking decide Mm -hmm. but i'm the kind of person i'm like i'm quick to act i'm gonna think it through and i'm gonna i'm gonna figure out my answer and you're going to stick with whatever you decide you're not going to go back and forth and back and forth that drives me nuts about her but again though it's like a sensitive topic it's her fertility and it's like it's a whole thing Mm -hmm. like i get it like keep in mind beatrice that at this time 2013 i think mary is desperately in love with cody still totally yeah desperately and like everything like take it like look at it from her perspective right up until robin everything was copacetic we heard about it in the last episode when the kids go to utah and cody even says like the lehigh house was the best season of our life as a family right and so that's what mary has in her mind that's what mary wants to someday return to yeah so it's that's fair and so that's why she's probably thinking about it even though she doesn't want to do it but even in last season season 18 we hear mary talk about like what would have happened though right imagine if i had a child in 2013 Now that kid's 11 and never seeing Cody because Cody doesn't spend time at anybody else's house except for Robin's much, never mind, much less my house. Mary, you would never have seen him. He would have been an absentee, deadbeat ass, not paying for child support parent. Oh, for sure. Just like he did with Truly. I mean, Truly's the same kind of boat. Like she's not seeing her dad very much Mm -hmm. at all because she's Christine's baby. And you know how Cody feels about Christine. Right. He's disgusted by her at this point. At least he's feigning some attraction to Mary a little bit and taking her to Mexico. I'm like, did did he take Janelle to Mexico? Did he take Christine to Mexico? He did take Christine to Mexico because when when they're talking to the tour guides, they talk about (gasps) having been there with Christine at some pyramid, right? So back in their honeymoon yes, phase. Yes, a long time ago. But order. not anytime long time soon. Time order. Yes. Well, and that's the thing too. Cody was talking about like polygamist husbands, like a lot of them don't do anything for their wives. Mm-hmm. Won't give them any gifts or attention Sounds or any kind wonderful. of trips. I'm like, what the fuck? How do you convince these women to go along with this if they don't even get a Mexico trip once every five years or I 10 have no years? idea. That's wild to me. But anyway, they go to Mexico. And then meanwhile, we have Robin and Janelle and Christine all pretending like they like each other and mm-hmm. hanging out. Yeah, we're going to go to lunch because <laughs> okay. Christine and Janelle are going to go take their exam to become real estate professionals yeah. and get their license. Oh my God. And then we're going to meet afterwards to see who passes. Mm-hmm. And then we have the scene at the Greek restaurant and we learn that of course Christine failed that <laughs> girl ain't smart honey she's a lot of things and I like Christine but she ain't smart baby no honey so she failed but of uh-huh. course Janelle got her license and yeah. we know Janelle goes on to be a real estate agent I don't know how successful she was probably not but she she passed yeah which is great she doesn't seem super excited about it but I think she's just kind of like yay now I can work 
to provide for my family mm-hmm. because my husband's a deadbeat and doesn't work and none of these other wives right. work mm-hmm. <laughs> so at all god uh, poor none. janelle she's like literally has to support this whole fucking mm-hmm. family with all these dumb adults like i i can't it could never be me back in mexico we've got cody and mary going to Co- coba coba pyramid or yeah. whatever coba pyramid i don't know where this is now see i've been to cancun honey yeah i've been to playa del carmen i've Hang been to on. tulum i've been around those wow. parts but i've never been to that pyramid me neither but it's a miserable experience i mean it's great <laughs> like if you want to go during the solstice and you want to be a hippie about it sure and you want to like stand in like the moonlight that's fine but yeah whoo we see Cody sweating out his ass, honey. He's got these khakis on and he's sweating through his ass because Why? it's so hot because they're climbing to the top of the pyramid. But let's think about how this day started with them. Yeah. Because the day starts, they go out to the beach kind of, right? Mm-hmm. And they're just looking at the wonderful view. It's and Mary's amazing. like, I just want to go out and play. Yeah. I just want to get in the water and just frolic with you and have a nice relaxed time. And he's like, well, nope. We've got all this stuff to do. We have all this content to produce. Mm. This is a working vacation, Beatrice. Yes. And he's thinking about all of the different scenes that he wants to produce. And so, Mary, I'm sorry. I know you think this is for your birthday and everything. No. But this man is giving you a job. And so you're not going to be able to enjoy yourself because you know they have one day of all these activities. And then they're probably flying back to Vegas. Oh, 100%. It's like the shortest Mexico vacation ever. They don't get to relax. He doesn't want to be there. No, he doesn't want to be there at all. But then they get to the fucking pyramid and then they got to tell these producer planted tour guides all about their polygamous lifestyle to get their shock and awe. I'm so stupid. I'm like, I can't. This is so cringe. And Cody being like, oh, you didn't know I was polygamous? Oh, well, I'm really famous. Right. I've got four (laughs) seasons on TLC and I'm very famous. I'm the only out polygamist, you know. And like, got all these Women. the tour guides are like oh wow like that's different <laughs> okay like, that's fucking weird i guess we have to talk about this now since you're making it a talking point and never needed to introduce the subject whatsoever but that's fine let's now go to some underground lake <laughs> let's go to a cave yep <laughs> which i mean that would be fun that would be fun it with the lake beautiful yeah the water was very clear they yeah. had to rappel down which sounds very adventurous very fun they swim down there they frolic mary they gets a little of that frolicking she in does. good for you mary but then she gotta climb that ladder out doesn't she girl now, i thought what mary would not make it me too because when Mary was at the gym with that abusive personal <laughs> trainer who made them all get oh on the God. scale in front of America and declare their weight, mm-hmm. Mary was like 210, honey. Uh-huh. So I don't think she's lost any weight since then. No offense. I'm a chubby girl. I'm a fluffy, curvy girl. I love it. However, 210 pounds, 210, 220 at this point. I'm like, you're going to haul yourself up this ladder straight vertical they have to go sideways on it too sideways which is like embarrassing and that poor camera angle i'm like i felt bad for mary because if that was me Uh i would never show my face on this earth ever again I, you know me i'm like sitting here like i gotta position myself on the pod so i look hot on you the need to camera. get you a big pillow i know like a body <laughs> just pillow just to me. put in front of your body a green screen and she's so th- you're literally the thinnest I know. person it's in the so family stupid. I know. it's really dumb but you're sweet really i get dumb. it i totally understand <laughs> but yeah Leo. no mary did it she actually made it up the ladder she did and she was like i'm really proud of myself and i'm like i'm proud of you i don't think i'd have i don't have the upper body strength no me. not at all can you imagine no <laughs> i'd be like somebody come and wrap a rope around Seriously. me and haul my ass up out of this I cave know. and then we saw cody at the top you know helping to unwrap her and uh-huh. his big old belly i know okay. he's got a dad bod for remember real. he's talking about a six-pack yeah. last season okay all right he's got a big Whatever. old belly well maybe he's working out after this because he wants to look hot for robin and her break dance and pussy maybe but back then she was the diesel jane model I mean, so she's got standards and expectations but back then he's been eating a little too much cake he's got his yeah. little fluffy whatever yeah. he's ridiculous and then after the whole underwater cave thing they go and ride on some dolphins dude i've been there to show huh you have yes i've been there I'm like, wait oh a minute. Gosh. That sounds like I remember being there with wow. some man in my past. Who was it? I'm like, is it my present man? No, it wasn't. Was <laughs> it my second men. man? It was my second man. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we went to Shell Ha. Wow. And it was pretty, it was fine. It was did a, you ride on some dolphins? I did not. I Good. snorkeled around and such and 
and then got the fuck out of there. I don't like planned excursions like that. Me neither. I don't like um, manufactured tourist attractions. Me neither. I just want to go to the bar. Yeah. I would like a Mai Tai at the hotel bar. Yeah. I just want to get drunk and sit in the sun and go in the ocean. Yeah. That's all I want to do on a vacation. And then maybe walk around to some shops at your leisure. Thank you. I don't want to be on a bus. No. Headed to Shell Ha. Absolutely To go not. swim with dolphins, which by the way is abusive, but dolphins uh, will sure. rape you. What? <laughs> dolphins will rape you. Did you know that they're like the only what? other mammal that rapes? What do you mean? Oh my God. There have been gangbangs. Stop. There have been dolphins running trains, honey. Oh my God. Well, maybe it's because they're getting their justice for having to haul people like Cody Brown on and the backs Mary. of them. Oh my God. <laughs> flying i'm that's sorry so i'm terrible. a hawaii girl i'm like i don't like that but whatever we're Absolutely not gonna get not. sidetracked but dolphins rape and could have raped cody wow i mean should, should have <laughs> that would explain sorry, a lot that we're gonna get demonetized whatever who cares fuck you YouTube. youtube's already demonetizing right. us <laughs> we stay demonetized. we do but anyway they ride some dolphins cody has to do his ultra masculine pose on the dolphin biceps yeah because he's such a loser. And then after that, they have a romantic dinner date. Uh -huh. But not before the wives that are back home. Right. At that lunch at the Greek, re Greek restaurant. Yes. They got to call Cody and Mary and tell them about who passed and who failed. Right. And we've got this who's on first, who's on second, <sighs> Abbott and Costello. Christine's trying to tell him, I failed. <laughs> no, I failed. <laughs> Janelle passed. I failed. I can't. And did it, it surprise so you that Christine failed? No, I think she did it on purpose, probably, because I don't think she wanted to do it. She don't want to work. No. No, she's raising kids. That's what she's doing. Yep. She's going to find herself an MLM, and then she'll be super happy, like she's already now. Yep. Exactly. So yes. she's she wanted to fail. That's my opinion. I think Janelle wanted to pass because she needed to pass because mm -hmm. she needs to have a job. What is Janelle? Is she a Taurus like me? Yes. Okay, I get it. Yeah. So, yeah, that whole conversation at the restaurant was embarrassing because Cody's acting like he can't hear them or whatever. And then flash forward back to them and the romantic dinner date on the beach where he has to, again, pressure Mary into mm -hmm. making a decision about whether or not she's going to rent out uh, Robin's womb, whether or not she's going to insert or do IVF through herself <laughs> like or it's adopt. A, like it's a fucking know. needle in your arm. Know. Like, I don't fucking like know. It's heroin. Right. Yeah. And Cody's kind of coming off a little crazy here because uh -huh. he's just like, I just need to know. Like, I need to know what we are doing in the future and how to push forward. Like, are you going to have this baby or not? And I'm just wondering what his agenda really is here. I mean, we've already kind of talked about, I, I honestly don't think he wants to have another child with Mary. I don't think he wants to be married to Mary or connected to Mary in any intimate kind of way, much less through a child. So I'm like, what are we doing here? Are we just, as I said, bringing up Robin and her noble sacrifice? Or are we trying, are, are we trying to get a moment with Mary turning you down? I so think, you can act like it's a rejection? I mean, maybe part of that, but I think it's because he value, well, he puts value in a marriage when there's like kids involved. And if Mary has no kids and he's like, okay, I'm not going to justify spending time with you then. I think that's like where he's at right now. He's mm. like trying to figure mm. out like how much time he needs to spend with all of these women. Like if Mary has no kids and doesn't need him, then therefore he doesn't want to be there. Christine, she's got it covered because she don't even like him anyway. So he's like, whatever, I'll come by on my oblig obligatory days just to make you kind of happy. And then Janelle, I'll give you that sweet, sweet loving because you're paying my way mm -hmm. and You're paying a everybody. real estate professional yes. you get the d exactly right. so that's where i think cody's at like i yeah. think he views everything as very transactional that kind of makes sense on the timeline because we know that he's kind of doing this slippery slope slide to like only spending time majority time with robin yeah and so he's trying to think of different reasons why he might be able to justify that in his energy, in his spirit. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe. And like maybe Robin is convincing him to do that. Like maybe she's the, the puppet like we've always talked about. But like I think part of it's on him because he's so stupid and he doesn't understand how real relationships should work. And I think he values sex a lot obviously because that's why he's with robin because he's sexually attracted to her and he thinks she's so hot and he loves her so she gets all of that which i'm sure she loves mm -hmm. but with mary and 
Janelle and Christine, it's like, okay, let me find excuses not to bang you. If you're not going to have a kid, Mary, why do I need to come over and give you that sweet, sweet loving? Yeah. Get a vibrator. Bye. And Christine, if every time I come over here, you're just bitching and moaning and nagging on me, why then do I why am I going to have sex with you? And Janelle, exactly. you don't want me, baby. No. But you know, I will so give it to you. If you want me, let me know. Yeah. You can make an appointment and I'll come over and do you like that. Yeah. And then get on out of here. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's already becoming that for Cody. Yes. Well, but like at the end of the day, what ends up happening is Mary's crying again because I think she's feeling this pressure. We're mm -hmm. having this conversation on camera. We're talking about her reproductive choices on camera. Again. I don't know why we're doing this. Yeah. But this is what we're doing. And she doesn't know whether she wants to even go to the doctor to check the viability of her eggs because of course cody's gonna want to do that on camera bit of course and content. if she doesn't have viable eggs because she's an old ass hoe <laughs> she's gonna have to put that out in front of america and yeah. we're in season four they're already getting criticism all eyes are on the brown so i could see why she doesn't want to do this yep so in this moment while they're having this romantic dinner she starts to break down and cry and she's like i just can't give you a decision right now because i don't know yeah leave me alone i know it's so sad it's like super weird why he's pressuring her but i think it is partly because of camera and because of the whole obligatory transactional relationship but it's just like cody you're such a piece of shit yeah how about we focus on some other things why aren't we talking about robin and her dumb life and her debt her credit card mm -hmm. debt and everything like that. And Robin, why aren't you trying to become a real estate professional? I what mean, the fuck are you doing? I know you got a kid and everything, so but busy Christine with my has five closet. children. Janelle has a million children. Yeah, I guess my sister wife's closet is her new endeavor. That's, She's designing. That's my job. Yeah. I am a designer. You saw all those drawings, professional. right? Hard on hard on hard on hard on hard <laughs> and testicles. I, I did see that, yes. <laughs> she was probably um using Cody's testicles as her muse for these <laughs> necklaces. Ew. Now I had to envision that. You're Thank welcome. you, Beatrice. <laughs> so that was it. That was yeah. pretty much the entire episode. Yeah. Um and so I ain't got nothing more to say. How about you? <laughs> I, don't I don't either. I just wish we could go back in time to 2013, 2012 cuz it's just Oh, you mean as a society? Yeah, it's just a simpler <laughs> time, man. How so? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Well, there was social <laughs> social media was not, was not as a thing. like integrated into our consciousness yeah. as it is now. But, like it was a simpler time. We had better music, club music, we had fucking sister wives all the time. We had I, sisters all the time. We had the Duggars. Oh my god. We had the Goslins. Those oh, are they? Were they done by then? No, they were still going. I think on. They were wrapping up. Yeah, though. yeah. We it was good television. It was good. Back then. It was we good had time. the Bad Girls Club. Honey. Oh my god. We had Flavor Love. Yes. We had a lot of good shows. There's so many good things. Well, that's why we're doing the rewind because yeah. we want to go back and we want to stay in the energy yes. of that. Yes. All right. Before we head on out of here, Beatrice, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful records? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go on to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. Five. It really helps other people know about our pod and get us to be more famous. So we really <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you so much. We're also going to be back next week, of course, to yeah. talk unexpected and more sister wives in the run-up for sister wives season 19 starting in august and, and also Plath. welcome to plathville yes. season six yes six, six seven six, six? six? yeah season six starting seven. in july so we're excited we're yeah. getting into this summer with all the good dumpster vibes yes. so come on back for that and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys <laughs>